Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. When siblings, Roderick and Madeline Usher, have built a pharmaceutical company into an empire of wealth, privilege, and power. However, secrets come to light when the heirs to the Usher dynasty start dying. Yes, folks, this is our raw reaction review for The Fall of the House of Usher. This video is sponsored by Full Moon Features. If you love horror collectibles, make sure to check out Full Moon's Tiny Terrors. Stick around for more information at the end of the video, or go to the website in the link below. Yes, folks, uh, that is right. Your eyes do not deceive you. Uh, this was a big get for us on the channel here. I mean, honestly, we've had the privilege of covering a lot of uh, early properties and with fantastic fest uh, it opened the door to a lot of new things for us and this was one of them um you know not to sit here and get into the whole diatribe as i like to do with uh, how this went about but um you know this was a little bit of something that we uh, we initially got right at the start of when everything was rolling out for fantastic fest we were excited uh we initially uh were under the impression that we'd be getting two episodes and uh, just like what everybody saw there um, and, you know, one thing led to another. There was a, a long no response in emails. We kind of had to go back and forth. We thought we had totally lost it. But then the glory of the horror gods graced us with not one, not two, but the entire season of Fall of the House of Usher. So, yes, this is a complete series review. And uh, what a treat and surprise that was. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, things were looking uh, a little grim uh, for a little bit, uh, but then, you know, uh, like Dylan said, the horror gods pulled pulled through, and we were able to uh, check this one out. And, you know, us being, we've mentioned several times on the channel, us being huge fans of Midnight Mass, I know this was a really anticipated uh, series for us to check out. So, uh, you know, us being able to um, get this early, what a gift. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we are big Mike Flanagan fans, as Luke just said there. And I think that, uh, you know, for the most part, a lot of his work, um, you know, I've enjoyed immensely. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Midnight Mass was definitely the moment that Mike Flanagan, I think, officially crested into uh, an all time great for me. And uh, yeah, I, I was excited for this. I know we've covered it on Sunday Scaries. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. So why don't we just hop right in and start talking about it? And right off the bat, right off the rip, I just have to say, if you're asking me as a fan of Flanagan, as a fan of his, uh, and we'll just talk his shows in, the, in this rating, um, and then we can say what our overall thoughts are with films. Um, this is damn good. Like, this is, this was... Uh, very impressive with just where this landed. Um, is this better than Midnight Mass? I don't think so for me. But again, um, what I've learned talking to Flanagan fans is that that's a very, um, you know, wide berth. There are some people who love Bly Manor. There are some people who love Hill House more. Um, and I think that's kind of the beauty of his work is that everybody kind of finds something they love. Um but I have to say, if there's any close second right now to Midnight Mass, it's this show. Yeah, um, for me as well. Um, you know, Hill House, I was a fan of. It just wasn't something that, you know, it had been out for a little bit by the time I'd seen it. So it was so built up for me. I was like, oh, it's good. But, you know, it didn't really stick with me like something like a Midnight Mass did. Bly Manor, I have actually, um, I have seen a few episodes. I never actually finished that one. Uh, but Midnight Mass was a big one for me, um, and I gotta say, that was still at the top here, but this one, Fall House of Usher, whoa, like, you know, you go in with high expectations, uh, tentatively, because, you know, you never know what you're gonna get, um, but you were hoping for something of quality, and I gotta say, Mike Flanagan absolutely did not disappoint throughout this, and from beginning to end, I gotta say, I was thoroughly entertained. Yeah, and, you know, this can be looked at as almost like a swan song for him, um, not in the sense of his career, I hope not. Like I'd, I'd want to see him do more stuff, but um, this is pretty much the end of his work with Netflix at this moment in time, at least. Because uh, yeah, he's he's moved on. I believe he's at Amazon now, um, is where he's going to be producing a lot of his uh, newer properties. Um, but yeah, I know they were kind of having a little bit of a tiff. Um, you know, we reported on that a little bit 
uh, months ago, almost a year ago, I want to say. Um, and, you know, it's understandable since we've been through the writer's strike and everything, kind of understanding probably uh, where Netflix's priorities lied. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it didn't it didn't hamper the work. He's not going to, you know, put out something to spite Netflix. No, he works for uh, his fans and he works for his material. And I think that that is one of the shining points uh, of the show for me is the adaptation of the material. Um, this is based off of Edgar Al works of Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, yeah, I think that the way they handle this uh, is is brilliant. I think for a modern audience, if you're not exposed to these stories, if you don't know anything about them, this is such an interesting and intriguing story and the way they weave it in that I have no doubt in my mind that once this premieres and I know this is going to hit big, uh, you're going to see a lot more people diving back into Poe. Oh, oh, without a doubt. And, you know, sometimes we get on here and I think some of the hardest works are those uh, that are translated um, from, you know, actual um, print material into uh, film because, you know, you have it imagined in, in your head one way. And so sometimes you're underwhelmed. But, you know, what I absolutely love and I said it a handful of times on here is, is the shorter the story and the adaptation, uh, having your own flavor to it and bring your own own swing with it here and i gotta say um without a doubt uh mike flanagan absolutely did that here if you haven't checked out uh the fall house of usher the actual print work from um edgar Allan paul i do encourage you to check it out if you can before this because i think knowing that source material and then being able to see how he kind of twisted it and made it his own while still keeping that dna you'll you'll get an even bigger appreciation for this because i was familiar with the actual source material before going into the fall house of usher and as soon as i would see these little grains of things that he was sprucing into this actual um limited series and it, while putting his own spin with big pharma and all this stuff it was such a a great modern take on um what you can do with those source materials that are really old but then you can kind of bring them back into current time and still weave those into society today Yes, and I got to say, my wife is a, a huge uh, Mike Flanagan fan, even though she will admit she doesn't recognize the name right off the bat. She is not a big movie person, um, but she knows his work. And this is something where they watch a lot of his shows. They've seen all of them, and they were really excited for this. And that was one of the things that was complimented by them a lot, was just that they had this uh, wonderful approach to adapting these stories because you know they they also really like Poe stuff they like kind of these darker um, more gothic tales and, and just how they adapted them and the kind of the the modernization they brought to it and the messaging uh the current day messaging that they were able to infuse um but still pull directly from the source material and kind of meld them together and i think that that's really smart and one of the things that i see um potentially being something that uh um, could be a complaint for people, but I definitely don't see it as that is um, the subtext and how they're interweaving a lot of um, modern issues, societal issues into this story. I feel like it's done so well here. It, it, there's so much care and attention to detail, um, especially when you talk about topics like Big Pharma and, and just like, you know, this whole statement of eat the rich and everything, you know, like they use that they use the current political zeitgeist but they use it um to further the story and not hamper it and just beat you over the head with it and i think that that is such a tough balance to walk and i really think that uh mike and his team did that wonderfully here yeah, and I, I think, like, looking at the, as you said, like, current issues of today, the modern issues, the societal issues, I think what Mike Flanagan did here, yes, that is is timely for now, but I, honestly, I do think it's going to be timely if you watch this 15 years from now. Absolutely. Because, you yeah. know, I, I think these are long-standing social issues, and to weave that into a, an outlet of entertainment like this, while also telling this really dark gothic tale and being true to a source material like they are with that tone is just tremendous it's one of those things where honestly i think every episode um in every way that he would weave in these different characters because that's a big thing here is there the actual source material is very limited in characters very limited and the way he expanded upon made his own characters and really made use of that cast i mean i was in awe every episode because i would go back to that edgar Allan poe work 
and be like, my gosh, he really did something tremendous here. Really something with his own voice. Yes, this is a source material, but this is very much a Mike Flanagan feel to it. Oh, I agree. I think that there's a there's a, a strong uh, melding of the two voices. Yes, and and you're right. As far as the characters go, um, those are very Mike Flanagan characters, and that's where I want to get into my next uh, point here and talk about this cast. Um, you know, obviously, with this being his Netflix swan song, in a sense, um, you, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces. And damn, I got to say, there are maybe like you could probably count on one hand how many new faces have joined uh the catalog here uh for the most part this is all returning people you have people from hush you have people from doctor sleep um you know midnight mass everything that he has done he brings people back and uh yeah i i, I the the only note that i wrote here aside from the people i want to highlight but i will say it and then pass it off to your thoughts luke um is the term stunt casting doesn't exist in Mike Flanagan's language. I'll tell you, like, looking at the cast of characters here, and yes, you always see these familiar faces. And, and you know, that's not um, a critique, I don't think, at all. Because, you know, sometimes you have these directors that tend to work with the, the same people over and over again. Maybe sometimes it gets uh, tiresome in a sense. But every time uh, Mike Flanagan casts a guy like Henry Thomas, you know... Um, he makes use and it's so versatile it's so different and fresh every time he brings them in it's you know i i kind of go back to sometimes looking at rob zombie he tends to cast um a lot of the same people in very similar roles for the most part whereas i think mike flanagan um i don't think it's intentional but i think it just has to do with his work where he is always bringing something different something unique and he gives each of these um actors way different material to chew on every time they come in back for a property so even though you're seeing these familiar faces here that he's worked with previously it feels almost fresh and new because of what he does in terms of scripting and how the show goes yes um and i believe i'm gonna butcher the last name here but um raul uh kaholi kaholi is uh one of the best examples of that uh he plays uh the sheriff in midnight mass and his character of napoleon here is, is so vastly different in every way but um a long time returning uh cast member collaborator and uh significant other uh to mr flanagan kate siegel to me was one of the biggest uh departures i think she's done in his work yet as far as just this role um all of these characters i have to say have hard edges and are ruthless and uh it's kind of this uh th this element that you you need to adjust to at first because it's like there aren't really any good people um in this family if you look at it i mean there are don't get me wrong there's a, there's a select couple characters but uh yeah no they're hard-edged and uh she was one of my favorites she for for the the, the episodes um that centered around her were were some of my favorite episodes I love the look. I love the way she carries herself. I love her whole niche in the family. And we're keeping this very spoiler free. But like, uh, yeah, I was sold. There is a specific scene. And all I'm going to do is point to my little Gordy's home poster here. And um, just to give Luke some reference, probably one of my favorite uh, buttons on an episode that uh, in this entire series. Oh my gosh. You know, yeah. there's sometimes that, you know, kind of leave you speechless. And I'm going to say her performance throughout this, my gosh, what charisma. Almost uh, kind of like a demented, likable charisma, I guess I would go with. Because um, the way that her character is portrayed in here and the situations um, that she's in are just absolutely tremendous. There's uh, so many memorable things. And, you know, obviously we're not getting into them, but. Uh, when you watch this, you'll be in awe of that performance and every different little mannerism that she gives um, throughout this entire thing. And another um, actor I want to touch on is uh, Bruce Greenwood, oh. I believe. Um, mm -hmm. There is scenes in here where uh, we're telling a, a large story and um there we always come back to him he's he's roderick usher and he's in in a room with another character and he's sitting in a chair and his performance just his delivery from that very first episode for me 
has me absolutely captivated. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on in, in this uh, series here. But some of my favorite scenes were just cutting back to Bruce Greenwood in his chair, just discussing events. And for me, that was just like when you're on the edge of your seat listening to an actor give dialogue in that performance and you get chills. I mean, you know that it's absolutely phenomenal. 100%. And yeah, um, as Roderick Usher, I had him highlighted on my on my cast highlights here. Uh, Bruce Greenwood uh, just carries um, so much of the emotional element of this show. Because um, it's one of those things where it's a, it's a complex character. And you really get to spend a lot of time with him. You see him at his worst. Um, and you see him at his best. And, you know, I think that um, the performance that Bruce Greenwood gives here um, is very layered and it can turn on a dime and I think that he was very much uh, just basically like eating up every line of dialogue that he was thrown, every scenario that he's put in, every twist and turn in this series um, he delivers such a powerful um, performance and and genuinely it's it's so tough to talk about his specifically without getting into spoilers because like it's it, there's so many moments i do want to touch on that just stuck with me but they would pull way too much and and there's a piece in here and not necessarily performance wise but um more so story wise that uh they kind of give uh roderick usher as almost an ailment in a sense to make him because a, a big part of the original source material is that roderick is uh, a kind of an unreliable narrator and we don't mm -hmm. necessarily trust him um and they do that here in the fall house of usher the mike flanagan version here they kind of give him this ailment that's very intriguing that you know again he's breadcrumbing a little bit and kind of you're getting little instances and then you start really figuring out exactly what's going on with roderick usher and i absolutely love again how they're intertwining those elements from the original source material into the current one yes i thought that that was very strong um another uh two performances because just for the sake of time that I, I i gotta ring up together because i could honestly talk about everybody in this cast um and that's why All i had to say yes and that's why i had to say there is no yeah. stunt casting here uh but the reason the one that made me do that uh officially is uh mark hamill just uh he's it's one of those things where you know you you get somebody like a mark hamill into properties especially uh as of recent where people are putting him in things like star wars things and it's just it's a legacy he's an actor with a lot of prowess i mean he's luke fucking skywalker he's the voice of the joker it's one of those things where it's like everybody wants to work with mark hamill and you know they do and i think that it's like oh yeah we have mark hamill that's our that is our push there that's as far as it goes mike flanagan uses mark hamill here he lets him breathe with his character and i dare i say this at least to me and i hope i hope and pray that other people will pick up on this this could be that next role that defines mark hamill you know you have luke you have the joker i think the character of pym is going to be one of the the shining points here that you're going to see in reviews you're going to hear from people he's that damn good it my gosh and like yeah like you look at mark hamill and i think you know sometimes he's casted just for the name without actually making use of the potential that mark hamill has what he can actually do um here mike flanagan lets him kind of just go and it's a very dark it's a, a very rugged performance a little more than you know when you think luke skywalker you're not thinking in terms of that but uh just the way to see how mark hamill has progressed it's like you know you're sitting there watching this show and very rarely do i feel intimidated by a character and i gotta say just from mark hamill's performance anytime he's on screen i almost feel intimidated like he's gonna be able to come through the screen at me and uh i'm gonna be fighting for my life because he is just that good and you know he's not like He's not a physically intimidating person, but just the way he carries himself and that assertiveness that he has. And the again, he's, yeah, he's always just kind of like that character that's stand, standing on the sidelines waiting uh, to be unleashed on you. And you really get that feel, that tension. Every time that he's in a scene for me, it automatically gets tense. 100%. And, you know, um, the last person that I want to talk about, and then we should probably move on from cast, unless you have anybody else you want to highlight, but mine was going to be uh, Carl Lumbly. 
Um, you know, he is also a, a very pivotal character to the show. Um, you know, he has a lot of time, uh, a la Bruce Greenwood in this show. They, they, have, they spend a lot of time together. Um, and I, I just thought that he brought a lot of humanity in a show with not very many uh, likable human characters uh, and more devils than, than I would say angels. Uh, he is one of those shining stars and um, it's he, he's got a lot of emotional moments. Um, there's also uh, I, I can't say there there is a counterpart. That's all I will say. There's there's a counterpart to his character um, and I'm, I'm pulling up the gentleman's name right now. Um, also, absolutely uh, wonderful, perfectly cast as far as just trying to go from a uh, one character to uh, the other version of the character, per se. I'm probably just giving too much away there. But I thought that uh, I bought the performance. There, wa there wasn't a single uh, time that I didn't believe that one wasn't just the same. If, if that makes any sense. It's tough. I'm sorry. It's just so damn tough to say. Um, but yeah, Luke, if you have anybody else you want to highlight or if you want to talk on that, feel free. Uh, just uh, going on that character of Augustus there, um, um, I think we're seeing a lot of things. We're almost on his side of things. You know, we're, we're kind of in there kind of seeing a lot of things through his eyes. And, you know, there's a lot of connective tissue uh, because there is some time jumping around here, kind of getting backstories of things dealing with current time. And you kind of are all over the place as you're getting filled in with the details. But, you know, with him, it's just what a arc that there is there. Um, it's one of those things where this this show in general is going to have you in awe, I think, of the storytelling. Because mm -hmm. there are so many moving parts and how they all come together in terms of, you know, all these different stories intertwining throughout each different episode. And, um it's just done so well and when you have so many characters like this it's hard to kind of get it give everyone a shining moment but i feel like each each cast in here has some sort of shining moment 100 percent. and you know it's one of those things i don't really watch tv um in a quick succession like we did for this we watched this in the span of two days um you know even luke i think you watched it in less than 48 hours so you know it's one of those things where it's like it 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 went by so fast and you know there was never really an episode that i could say dragged there's never a moment to where i wasn't invested and that is uh due to these performances due to the top-notch writing and i gotta say one of the last elements i want to highlight here is um the overall it's probably something that doesn't need to be said but uh the direction and cinematography here um were, were stellar there are so many moments in this uh that will just have your jaw dropping if you love cinema if you appreciate um you know camera work and just how people you know uh truly go through um you know the process of filmmaking and really dive into it um yeah and the beauty of it is is that um mike flanagan's longtime cinematographer here uh his name is uh Michael Phil Monog uh, um I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but he's, he directs four of these episodes. Mike Flanagan directs the other four. Uh, absolutely uh, on the same energy, on the same level. And the thing about it is sometimes when you watch a show, you can tell when there's another eye behind the camera or another, um, you know, voice uh, pushing the story along. These two are on such a synced wavelength that it's like it's so it flows so well it's like it, it's interchangeable yeah and you know looking at this i obviously the comparison is always going to be made when you know you're such a big fan of another series of his where it's like looking at midnight mass and so many beautiful shots in there that have been composed and I, you know that was one of the things kind of going into here is it's like yeah, maybe the story is there but you know are we going to have as many standout scenes in terms of being able to compose a shot? And I got to say, did not disappoint on any end. I mean, looking at this one, the one thing that I do take away from the Fall House of Usher is the difference between Midnight Mass is that so many different location feels mm -hmm. in the Fall House of Usher. There's so many different instances, so unique situations. And they make use of those situations throughout. It feels like, yes, you're watching one cohesive show, but each different tale an installment every episode has its own feel to it you know they really take advantage of that i think um because this is uh this is a show that i would be excited to sit down and kind of almost if we ever had the time to dissect scene by scene and be like you know pick out so many shots because 
you know, for the sake of time, we're not going to do it, but there are a handful of great shots already that are off the top of my head. So it's like one of those things where you can really sit down and just pick apart this show in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree. And, you know, um, if you guys do want, we will proposition you right now. If you're, if you're interested, if you want this, give us a hit the like button comment we will do a spoiler discussion you know maybe a week after the show drops give everybody some time to watch it we'd love to sit down and just talk for maybe 30 to 40 minutes about it um and i know i said that was one of the last elements but something that we had said that i think needs to be highlighted we don't have to dive too deep into it save it for spoilers if we get there um is that um when you run um a horror podcast a horror youtube channel and or you just consume a lot of horror you don't often find yourself getting scared it's more the elements that intrigue you it's more the gore that fascinates you um i have to say that this is one of the rare instances where a show has given me uh frightful chills where a show has made me feel um uneasy enough to say i felt a bit scared uh in, in a couple of moments especially um, some of the the reveals and some of the things that happen when they don't give you all the answers right away it's it, it makes you feel so uneasy and uh, that is a true feat in my book for for somebody who watches a lot of horror and isn't scared it's to have a, a couple of chills run up my spine that's pretty damn good absolutely and um i know I had finished it before you and i told you that there was a scene there's a situation yes in here that i have you know i don't i don't recall ever being um taken on this journey of as soon as you put me in that situation and we keep going back to the situation i immediately went out like i want to be able to just, uh, be able to c climb away and you know be able to be like can we just not right now and it's one of those things where it's so captivating it's so tense you get so much anxiety that it's going to sit with you. That's something that still sits with me, even a, almost a week of watching this. It's it's something that is going to stick with you. It's sadistic, it's wild, but it's so well done. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, that moment, and uh, there's a moment, um, and I'll all say is a caps off episode two. Holy shit. That is a, uh, that, that's a, hey. that is a scene that will fucking stick with you. And uh, yeah, this this show does not uh, stray away from the gore either at all. Uh, this is this his bloodiest. Uh, I was thinking piece so. of media because like trying is... to think about it, even for a show that is about vampires like uh, Midnight this... Mass, this is fucking bloody. This is this gory. Is, yeah, this is wild. This is probably a new territory. I would say this is something that a lot of the scenes, the imagery in here is gonna stick with you. It's really well done. Absolutely. Um, I do have to lob one little piece of criticism here to kind of uh you know i guess save us a little bit from seeming like absolute fanboys but guys the show I'm is okay that good it. the show is is it really, really is. it's really good like i don't want to sit here and just sound like i'm just you know worshiping at the feet of mike flanagan like we already do but like it's genuinely one of the best uh best shows i've seen or best piece of media i've seen all year um you know it's right up there again like i said with midnight mass for me but um you know saying that my wife is a, is a fan of his work um you know being more of an outsider in the sense of you know not being the biggest horror fan um there were a few criticisms they had that i think are are valid and fair and something that you should be aware of um don't try to watch the show passively give the show the attention because there's a lot of details that if you don't pick up on um you you might get lost and it is one of those things where the story is 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 moving at such a quick pace that like if you if you don't sit there and give this show the attention that it deserves um there might be things that you miss there are things that my my wife missed and you know just because they're passively looking at their phone or something this is one of those shows i'd say turn the phone off turn it down do what you got to do because you, you want to pick up on everything there's nuances that you'll miss so I just need you to take it serious, but also understand that it's okay if you're not fully picking up on everything. It's okay if you feel lost, because again, I think that this is going to be warranting rewatches. I think that this is something that's worth it. Um, and I, I do think it's good. So just a passive kind of criticism I can give um, that if you if you're not truly committed or invested, 
um, you can get lost a little bit with how quick everything moves. And, you know, for me, I was going to say, actually, that, you know, it's very easy, especially when this stuff is streaming and you're watching from the convenience of your own home to get on your phone and, you know, fold laundry, whatever you're going to do. Um, I'll be honest, uh, going through this, um, you know, and I'm guilty of, you know, when something is streaming to pop on my phone every so often to see what's going on. I forgot my phone existed. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I can, I watched this thing um, on a Saturday from beginning to end. And to forget your phone exists almost all day in 2023 is a really, really hard thing to do. But Mike Flanagan did it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I love to hear that. Um, yeah, I, I, I was guilty myself. I mean, it's eight hours. Um, I can say the only time that I ever picked up my phone uh was to honestly pull up uh the imdb because i wanted to check uh who because like there were their faces you know you recognize the faces you got to be like oh that guy's the guy from hush or that's the guy from this um you know but yeah guys this is um definitely one for the books i i think that every piece of hype you have heard is valid uh buy into it uh get excited because again this is uh this is truly I think going to be looked at as a crown jewel in the Mike Flanagan catalog. And uh, it's something that I'm eager to keep discussing. I'm really eager for this to finally come out this upcoming week and, and like get more people's opinions, be able to talk to people and uh, yeah, just, just really dive into it. Cause this is, this is definitely up there. Um, I'd say for his whole filmography. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to be able to, talk to people about this you know since we saw it earlier we got to be hush hush on it um so you know i'm excited for a discourse here i really want to hear everyone else's thoughts um because honestly i think everyone's gonna love it um mm -hmm. again i didn't really have any critiques for this one this one had me um, captivated from beginning to end yeah gore is really well done character development is great um the writing is always on point and you know the direction is just phenomenal so you know for me this is an easy must see um this is appointment watching if it's going to be hard because uh if you're going to limit it to one episode a day it's going to be very easy to say yeah let me just watch the next one because it's that yep. good yes and i i i 100 second that that's how i felt with uh midnight mass and uh this was one of those things where it's like even though we had initially said okay we're going to burn through this and we're going to get our review out right away this was something that, um, you know, we are fathers, we do have children, so sometimes there are breaks you have to take, and other videos we had to upload, but, um, you know, this was something that I knew I wasn't ending my weekend until I finished, and uh, I think between Saturday, about 5 o'clock, I started, and I watched up until, like, 10.30 on uh, Sunday night. And uh, I, I did not want to stop going to bed that night and not having a resolution to a certain event uh, until hours later. It had me chomping at the bit to know what was going to happen. I think, you know, and every episode leaves you in awe. I think oh, yeah. some of the horrific scenes oh, that you do see is... I just... love the way they end these episodes. You guys... It... It, you have it, no idea they're they're you know because you can look at this and say i don't know how they're gonna weave in so much horror they do these are very horror centric episodes everyone oh, yeah. is bookended beautifully there's something wild that happens it is just uh, for me this is really perfect again midnight mass i've sat with for longer i've rewatched several times so i absolutely have a love for it the, the dialogue in that is just spot on but well, House of Usher, one watch through, and, you know, I'm sold on this one. I can't wait to give it subsequent rewatches because I'm just going to grow to love it more and more. 100%. But, yes, we're going to end it right there. Again, guys, if you want us to do a spoiler, uh, you know, review of this, really dive deep into some of these episodes, I'm down. I'd love to, you know, go through, do a cursory watch, and just try to pick out little details and things that I want to talk about. I don't necessarily think I need to sit through the whole series again right now because it's so impactful and so fresh in my mind even after a week of watching but uh hell i'll do it if if, if that's what it warrants I'm, I'm down i will watch it um i'm almost tempted to watch it with friends uh because they're also big mike flanagan fans and they're excited but yeah guys this is easily a high recommend from us i think that that's safe to say luke already said it but i'm i'm throwing it on there too uh make time for fall the house of usher 
Uh, whether you're a Flanagan fan or not, I think there's something special here. Like Luke said, this is made uh, for horror fans. There's a lot of great horror and tension and scares and just character work in this in general. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. So if you guys want that spoiler review, like I said, hit that like button, uh, share this video around, comment, let us know that you want it and we will do it. And uh, yeah, also let us know what you thought. If you've just finished the show and you just found this review, um, you know, give us your thoughts. Uh, you know, definitely uh, if you have any spoilers, put the spoiler tag up uh, ahead of it because I don't want people to get anything spoiled for them. Um, but yeah, this is this is fun. This is good. This is solid. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, we do have a lot of great stuff on the channel. Lots of new reviews. Um, you know, we had just saw, just seen The Exorcist Believer uh, this past weekend. Um, you know, that was okay. Um, and then, you know, we've got uh, some other cool things up there as well. Uh, we're also still running our promotion with uh, Full Moon Features and their Tiny Terrors line. Uh, like I always say, there's a link down below if you want to get more information. Um, they should be dropping here within the next couple of weeks. You can pick them up. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get some in hand and uh, show them off to you guys. But uh, alrighty, I guess that's it. So until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared.